And, uh, if this step is a benchmark, it has a known elevation, let's say that step elevation happens to be 100 feet. So then I take a rod reading with the instrument, and obviously a rod person would be holding the rod and waving it. But assuming that's done, I'm reading four feet, four tenths, and five hundredths. So 4.45 feet. I'm going to add that 4.45 to the bottom of the step elevation of 100. And now the height of my instrument is 104.45 feet. I now have established the height of instrument, which is known uh, as HI. Next, if I wish to get the elevation here, which is two steps up, and again the rodman would be waving the rod, I now get a rod reading of 3.41. So this is known as a foresight because now I'm going to go from the height of the instrument of uh, 104.45 minus 3.41 and that difference would be the elevation of that step going from the instrument back down to the ground. So that's how we would acquire the elevation of that position on the ground. So differential leveling is nothing more than going from a known elevation with a backside positive added to the known elevation to get the height of instrument. And then we get another rod reading and that is subtracted from the height of the instrument to go back down to the ground. Essentially that's how we do everything with a, a level. Now if we are to move the instrument, we're running a level circuit the rodman would stay at the position where the rod is now at the new ground elevation of approximately 101.04 1, uh, feet elevation. And I could then move the instrument to a different location, set it up, re-level it. I would backsight that rodman's position at elevation 101.04 get a back sight, I would add that to 101.04, whatever the rod reading is, if it happened to be four feet even, I would then have a new height of instrument of 108. Point, uh, whatever it was. So now I'm ready for another foresight. So that's repeated. And once we're finished taking all our shots, and we do back sights and foresights, and or maybe side shots. The last thing we do is come back to our original location or a different known elevation and I must close my loop. So once I've made a turn and I've established a new HI, I go back to my benchmark and again, I read my final rod reading, subtract that from my HI, and I should come back to the stated elevation where I either started or to another stated elevation of another benchmark. Never, ever is there a reason to do any kind of level work and not close the loop. Even if I only make one elevation transfer from a temporary benchmark to a concrete slab, I must make one turn and close the loop. If I don't, I cannot mathematically prove any elevations that I've done. And I'm asking for a very expensive problem. Always, always, always close the loop. And to close that loop, you have to have a minimum of one turning point. So that's it for the auto load.